Give it a little bar. We're here at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018. We wanted to come and look at an airplane that drew our eye because we know this airplane. This is the Merlin PSA and it looks a little different here because there's two configurations. Let's start off with the one behind us back here, the white one, which has a gasoline engine in it. Is that correct, Chip? Yes, it's got the HKS. It's a perfect match for that uh, airframe. It's 60 horsepower, four-stroke aircraft engine. It burns uh, three gallons an hour at uh, a higher cruise of about, a little over 100 miles an hour. And it's just a beautiful plane to fly with that four-stroke in there. It's really a lot of fun. And the cost is of a completed aircraft is um, could be around forty, forty-five thousand dollars, depending on your panel. All right, so let's review that a little bit because that's an it's interesting bit of information about the Merlin. First of all, it's a single seater. Some people go, well, I gotta have two seats. Well, I question that because how much of the time do you actually fly your airplane with two people in it? Yes, sometimes, but a lot of the time we pilots tend to fly by ourselves. It's fun to do that. Well, most so of the a time, single seater, why not? The price of the aircraft goes up exponentially with the number of seats. It so if you like a, a two-seat LSA, it's well over $100,000, sometimes over $200,000. And you're down below $50,000 for the whole yeah, shebang. Yeah, and it actually it has a, a higher wing loading and a higher power to weight ratio than nearly every LSA, which means when you hit the throttle, it sets you back in the seat, about 150 feet takeoff roll. Is that right? And, and, and you just keep accelerating as you climb. And just I get to 12,000 feet in 18 minutes. And, is that uh, right? Yeah, wow. and you can just do what you want. It's just a, a fun plane to fly for just, just to go up and, and enjoy it or to do a cross country. It, it's just really stable. And I just flew up from Dayton. I flew up to, from Florida before to Oshkosh. And it's easy to make long flights. It's easy to make short flights. Yeah, we're talking it's a fully fun. enclosed aircraft. Looks like looks like lots of aircraft, except it's a single seat. Uh, with a with a door just on the right side of the aircraft, is that correct? That, yeah, you only need one door, right? And you don't need that door at all. It flies beautifully without the door. Ah, does it? Okay. For and an yeah. ultralight pilot like me, yeah. that's always of interest. And it's got a, a enormous amount of baggage. You can put a full uh, aircraft style roll on in there. A is computer right? bag, a, a case of water. Uh, you know, it's a tool bag, and all all that. Not just one. Not not just choosing. This, this, it handles the CG. It handles the weight. You can't even tell it's there. So Beautiful. it's really, and there's a lot of room. So for it's a quite person. a good cross country flying machine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what kind of cruise speeds would you see with that HKS engine in it? I, I cruise around 100 miles an hour. About 100 if, miles an if hour? If you wanted to have a little bit of higher altitude or higher fuel burn or, or uh, adjust the prop for cruise, you could be at over 110 miles an hour. Okay. Well, that starts but to be I, very I realistic you know. numbers and to fly a distance. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. And the now, nice thing about the the single seat is you're right on the uh, on the center of the all the axis. So even if there is some turbulence, ah, okay. you don't get moved around much. But the wing loading is higher, which means you can fly the, in the middle of the day and enjoy it more. And you're not getting jostled no, no, around just all a little the time bit. As much. You don't even. You, I, I hardly in an hour. I might not even touch the stick. I might just touch the rudder pedals a little bit, make an adjustment here and there, or even make a turn. Sounds sweet. Yeah, now, I've had the pleasure to fly the HKS engine on a number of different airplanes, and I'm a big fan of that engine. I love its sound. Uh, it, it has kind of a purring, growling kind of noise to it that's yeah. pleasant. It's not screaming at you. Um, it's very fuel efficient, as you mentioned. Three gallons an hour at cruise, you're talking about. Well, at high cruise, it's two and a half on the books, and you can get that at 52, 5300 RPM. Okay. And the other thing is it's got a really nice uh, torque curve. So when you slow down the, the RPM, you have a 3.48 reduction drive, which means the prop is really slowing down. So we end up putting a wide curve, you know, thick prop on it to soak up that torque. And the prop make, generally makes a lot of noise as part of the aircraft uh, no, footprint. And this and reduces that, and that, that a lot. That, that, that and the, and the four-stroke and the, and the quiet prop makes it a very, very quiet aircraft all around in the air for the people flying it and on the ground. And for the pilot in the cockpit. Exactly. Not so noisy. Are you using, I see this is Duke Elise, yeah. this is the prop you're talking about? Yeah, the wind spoon. The wind spoon yeah, with this it, larger right. uh, uh, tip on it. It's really good on the lower RPMs. That's really good at cruise. Yeah, where you were just talking about. That's yeah. why yeah. I thought I'd focus on that. This is a French company, Duke Elise, they do a very nice job. People seem to love this prop. I've talked to a lot of people who like their props. But you're making an effective use of it in kind of a different way by reducing noise signature. Correct. 
Correct. Excellent. So this airplane is an available airplane right here, right now, today. You're selling these yeah, things, right? Yeah, that has already been inspected and approved as a, a classic 51% kit by the FAA. It's on the list. Okay. And we sell it as a quick build kit only. And it comes lo looking like a finished aircraft, but it isn't. You spend the first day and a half taking it apart down to get 51% <laughs> with a quick, re quick release rivets and then put it back together and the airframe can be built in maybe three, four days. Is that right? Yes, and wow. about a week on, depending on your panel on engine avionics. And it's um, really, really a fast build. I've seen it come in in the crate and it looks like, pretty much looks like an airplane in the shipping crate. It, is, it does, it does, but the top skins are held on temporary rivets. Yeah, so so you got all, all these rivets along the edge here and you're talking a few of them already in position, already yeah. holding the yeah. parts where they need to be, Right. and then those you'll later on remove yeah. well, and when you do the permanent you do is rivet. take off, a, say, for example, a top skin with the temporary rivets with a little battery drill, and then um, and, and check your controls and your bell cranks, you know, put some controls in, run some uh, light wires perhaps, and vacuum it out, and then rivet it, rivet it up. Uh, All right, sweet. Yeah, really and you've quick. had people come and do this with you down in Florida? Yeah, we do build centers. Actually, we've found the building is so quick, it's easier to do the build center on the customer's site. How, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so, so that's a new to, thing from when we talked about this before. Right, then. We don't have to ship the airplane. It's easier for me to get on an aircraft, go there for a week or two, and finish the aircraft. It goes that fast. Wow. Then, and the airplane is right there for the FAA to inspect. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot better than and, because the, the build center idea, I mean, it's a great idea. It's still a way, a solution for many people, but it means somebody's got to travel somewhere, usually two or three times or whatever it takes. And then, fine, now it's done there. It's not at home. You're not getting it inspected by your local guy. Yeah. Uh, and you got some challenges to put all that together. It can be done, right, of course, right. and many people have done it. But that solution sounds uh, more elegant for the buyer. Yeah, I've, I've been doing those build programs all over the world, really. Yes, I remember you've gone to yeah. some places and assembled your aircraft. Yeah. So. So the uh, the Merlin PSA, tell me a little bit more about its construction qualities as all aluminum airplane. Well, there's something really unique about this, and we you might even talk to the builder. He bought his he brought his kit here to the show, and he is actually uh, when he's not when customers aren't asking him questions, he's putting his airplane together here at, at the show, <laughs> and he hasn't drilled. I thought a hole. I've seen that one kind of come along as yeah. I've gone by it each day. Right. So so he hasn't drilled a hole yet. He hasn't drilled a hole yet. Is that right? Except for taking out those temporary rivets. Every rivet's fit. They're all punched to the final size, and the rivets just drop right in. So the difference here is these are not pilot holes, no, as everybody knows them. Finished precision match holes. So Even these are the, the right areas, size right away. It's, it's amazing that the curved areas match perfectly. The yeah, I, I actually saw one of your builders doing that, and I kind of went, those aren't going to line up, and sure enough, when the metal got all the way back to where it was supposed to be, it appeared yeah. they lined up perfectly. Yeah. I was one of the early adapters for match hole technology making my other aircraft. And we were just doing pilot holes that was close. Yeah, well, which is nothing not, compared that, to that this. was a good step, but oh, this is big. a better step. I didn't even know we, we could manage that tech that close, and it, but it works perfectly. Yeah, people think only companies, I don't know, like Boeing or Cessna or whatever, can manage this kind of high use of technology, but you're doing it on this beautiful little single seater. Yeah, the quality of this aircraft, especially considering the price, is just uh, there's nothing close to that uh, ratio. So in affordable aviation, you've got a real you've got a real good grip on it here with two aircraft in your stable, the Merlin PSA and your Electrolite. Now that you're also selling, both are yeah. very modestly priced. So for people that are yeah. challenged by budget, which is a lot of folks, we understand not everybody can afford or care to buy a hundred and fifty thousand dollar LSA. Those are wonderful, and if you got the money, great, or you got a partner. But if you want to own your own airplane and not have it break the bank, you got a great choice here for people. Right, right. You save $100,000, and usually that's where you put your phone in the second seat, you know. <laughs> so and the quality of the social With all the money you save, you, know? you go buy your buddy, you go borrow your buddy's airplane, yeah. or you rent one, or do something else when you need to take family members along for a flight. Right. I fly single seat aircraft for the quality of the social experience. <laughs> talking to yourself all the time. There you go again. Well, great stuff, Chip. A lot of information about Merlin PSA. What's the PSA stand for? Personal Sport Aircraft. There you go. It's a nice term, uh, I think, and applies very well to what the airplane is for. Yes. Enjoy your time in the air and do it economically. How bad could that be? Where do we find more information from you, Chip? Direct Air us on the yes. web. Aeromarine-lsa.com. Great. Information about Merlin and the Electrolyte, the other company, the other airplane that Chip sells, available along with a lot of other affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Chip Irwin and myself here at EAA AirVenture.